Hello again everybody welcome back to another edition of On the Range and today again I'm up in the F-86 Sabre and I'm going to go over rocket delivery against air to ground targets out here on the range and show some features of the gun sight and describe how to set up and successfully execute a rocket's attack. So let me begin by getting the aircraft set up and there is a lengthy process that goes into this. Not really lengthy there are just a lot of switches that tie into the rockets. So I'll start down here on my center pedestal and I'll just verify that my main selector switch is in any position other than off. This is going to apply power to the site and allow me to aim. The next switch that applies to rockets is this guarded three position switch. It has an auto, a center off position, and a single position. In the auto position, rockets are going to fire as long as I have the weapons release button depressed and held. They'll continue to fire in rapid succession until I either release the weapons release button or I run out of rockets, whichever occurs first. If I go to the off position, that's the center position, voltage is going to be removed from the firing circuits for the rockets and I'm not going to fire anything. So it's kind of like a safe position on the rocket switch. If I go to the up top pos uh, single position, I'm going to, with each depression of the weapons release switch, fire off one rocket. And that's the setting that I'm going to use for the first part of this demonstration and I'll just leave that right there. Okay, this switch, and this is sort of a correction to my manual pit bombing system video that I did a couple back. This switch does not, like I thought, control delay settings on the bomb fuse. It controls delay settings on the rocket fuse. So there's a small correction. If I want the fuse to detonate instantaneously using the nose fuse of the rocket, I leave it in the instant position. That's the bottom position. If I want the rocket to impact and then detonate after a small delay just using the internal mechanism of the fuse and not the electrical fusing or instantaneous fusing option I would put it up to the delay setting and if I leave it in the off position it's still going to function but it will still use the delay so I'm going to go with instantaneous on this delivery just for oh just for the sake of leaving it there there's really no right or wrong way to do that depending on the effects that you want Okay, now coming over to the left side, the other two items that apply to rockets delivery, I have a bomb target wind correction dial, I have a rocket and gun setting all the way down at the bottom. That's the setting that I want to be in for rockets since it's not going to correct windage for rockets for me. And I want the tab on my A4 gun sight, I guess selector mode dial, set to the rocket position. And that's going to allow me to then use this center tab and center dial to select a depression angle for the side reticule. So if I uncage the sight, now this dial is going to control, let me get up here so you can see it, it's going to control the depression angle of the sight. So as I move it around, you can see that the sight moves up and down. Now from all of my reading and everything that I've seen on employment of rockets in the F-86, 17 mils is the default setting. That's what was actually used at the time for rocket delivery in the F-86 from anywhere from a level delivery to a 40 degree dive, I'm finding that that setting doesn't really successfully get me on target. I'm finding that a setting more of up around 50 mils all the way over to the uh, far extent of this dial is uh, more of a, a more reasonable setting. And like with anything when it comes to like a manual delivery of weapons and something where you're just gazing, gauging a position based on the position of the site and you don't have like a computer system backing you up technique does come into play and that setting will vary from person to person so 50 mils might work for me but 30 mils might work for you and your technique and how you like to employ rockets so there's a lot of trial and error that comes into play here okay so one more dial over here on the left console that I need to worry about for this and it's the rocket intervalometer and this has 16 positions corresponding to stations that the rockets are loaded on. So if I go to the external view real quick, you can see that I have 16 rockets loaded. And the stations go, station 1 is outboard bottom, station 2 is, I'm sorry, station 1 is outboard left bottom, station 2 is outboard right bottom, station 3 is at, in sequence from there. So this intervalometer allows me to select the rocket that I want to fire. So I'm going to leave it to position one since station one is the first rocket that I have loaded. But if I had rockets, say, only on the inboard station, I might want to go to like position nine and only have this set up to, just have it set up to start at the first rocket that you have loaded. 
That's the intent behind the center velometer. And with each rocket that I fire, the center velometer is going to step to the next station and apply voltage to that station. Okay, so one more little piece of setup. You can see that this radar uh, lock indicator is flickering. It's picking up ground clutter and it's kind of it's kind of a distraction to me in this case. It's working normally, but what I'm going to do is set my radar range dial down to the minimum setting when I'm on this zero to ground pass, and that removes the flickering light and allows the rocket reticule to be displayed steady in the gun sight, and that's going to help me out when it comes to lining things up and not being such a distraction. So at this point, all the circuits are hot, I'm ready to employ rockets, all I need to do now is roll in on the target, place the reticule over the target, and when I'm at the range that I wish to fire, you press the weapons release button on the stick. So I'm going to do this first pass from a, a relatively shallow dive angle, I'll go for about 20 degrees, and the key here is going to be to smooth, uh, fly it smoothly. I don't want to have any excessive G-loading on the aircraft as I'm firing the rockets. If I'm pulling G's as I fire, that's going to throw the rockets off. If I'm pushing over and getting into negative G's as I fire, that's going to also affect the greatly the accuracy of the rocket. I just want to be in a steady dive, almost hands off the control once I'm ready to fire, and just let the reticule gently walk up to the target. Once it coincides with the target location, then I depress the weapons release button to fire my rocket. Okay, so let me go ahead and pop up and fire on some targets out here on the range. So I'll get up to a high enough altitude to give me about a 20 degree dive angle. And I'll go for some uh, some vehicles that I have out here in the distance. Okay, still coming up. Okay, rolling out on the vehicles. I'm just going to put my reticle just short of my intended target, allow it to walk up to the target, and then when it coincides with the target location, fire the rocket. Okay, so still coming up. I'll go for this last one in sequence here. We're in the line. So walking it up. Fire. Going to break off so that I don't overfly the detonation. And there we go. Round on target. And that's just a, a matter of trial and error. It took me several attempts, as you can see on the, uh, the test flight video series, once I get to the air-to-ground portion of that, that I spent a lot of time figuring out a proper mill setting based on my technique, and this is going to vary based on the range that you like to fire from and the rolling technique and just how stable you usually are on the delivery, but I find that about 50 mils works for me. So let me try this with one more setting. I'll go to the auto position on my switch, and now rockets are going to fire as long as I am depressing and holding the weapons release button. So let me roll back in on this target area. I'll come in from a steeper dive angle as well. And I'll fire on this area. I'll pickle off. I'll try to pickle off several. And one technique that you could use if you wanted to. I have 16 rockets. And let's say, for example, that I only wanted to fire off four on this pass. What I could do is set my intervalometer to position 13. It's going to step over to station 16 at that point and stop there. It's, it doesn't always work that way because it's going to step right back to station 1 and continue firing. But if I had a gap in there... I could use the intervalometer to to put a gap in the in the rocket firing sequence if I wanted to, and that's just uh, may or may not be useful depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, so coming around, I'm going to go for about a 40 degree dive angle, and I could judge this based on the position this is as I as this uh, marker is uh, get on the dive. But I'm going to use my ADI or my attitude indicator to to gauge a 40 degree dive angle. Okay, that's about right. I'm going to go ahead and roll in on the target. And for this type of dive angle, I'm actually going to put the speed brakes out. Okay, so rolling in, and let me just steady up here. Get established in the dive, and I should have my reticle start to come up. Okay, here we go. Uh, waiting for it to go inside. Depress and fire. Okay, four rockets are off. I pull up just to stay out of my rocket detonation. They went a little bit long, so a trial and error, and just finding the mill setting that works for you, for the release perimeters that you usually employ rockets from. And that time, okay, I know that from a higher dive angle like that, but I need to go for just a slightly lower mill setting. I might go for 40 mils if I try a, a higher angle dive like that. So that's uh, a lot more complicated subject than I thought it would be initially. This was going to be just a little three or four minute video, but it ended up being 
uh, quite, uh, yeah, quite complex. But hopefully that did clarify some things when it comes to rocket employment, and and hopefully that does give you some ideas to improve your ability to fire and employ rockets. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.